Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Now, as you've seen from the title of this video, it's yet another gear review. Hmm, I know what you're thinking. He told us only two months ago he doesn't do gear reviews very often. Well, mm, true, a bit like a bus, don't do one for ages and then two come along at once. However, I do have a reasonably good excuse. Um, I've got three criteria that would encourage me to bother you with a gear review. Uh, the first one is, of course, that I'm not required to editorialize in any way to uh, take instructions from the manufacturer or be influenced. So you can take that as read. Uh, the second criteria is that I think it might be something which you would find interesting. And in this particular case, specifically, if you're following my channel because uh, you shoot with Micro Four Thirds system like I do, um, or even a, a smaller format camera. Uh, and the third reason is that, is it something that I would highly recommend? Uh, I'll make a list of pros and cons, and if the cons and pros are even just about level, I won't review it, or at least I won't put a video out about it. So you can take it as read that it is something that I recommend, and in this instance, something which uh, I've been using consistently over the last uh, couple of months, and will continue to use as long as it stays in one piece and doesn't fall to bits. So you've seen from the title, it's a small rig carbon fiber tripod. Now, let me just backtrack a little bit because tripods and I have something of a history. You may recall a video that I made, God knows how long ago, 18 months, something like that, where I made the point that tripods are really not that important. They're just something to position your camera in the sort of X, Y, Z of the space-time continuum, and you shouldn't get too hung up on them. Now, when I said that, I was using a pretty cheap KNF tripod, and I'd been using it for about five years, something of that ilk. And it was starting to fall to bits at that point. And shortly thereafter, it did fall to bits to the extent that I just use it these days to prop up an iPad in front of my rowing machine to keep me entertained. But that said, at that time, I needed to replace it. And what I replaced it with was a three-legged thing Ray travel tripod. Now that's not a bad tripod at all. I was happy to support a British company and this has served me quite well over the last 18 months or so. I do have a few issues with it. One is that despite being branded as a travel tripod, it's a bit of a lump. I mean, I haven't got a ball head on here at the moment because normally I use it with my Benro geared head. But even like this, it weighs about 1.3 kilos. Uh, also, it's quite well engineered, and as I say, you know, I, I, ha I wouldn't have replaced it had Small Rig got in, got, not got in touch with me. But I do have some issues. These twist locks can sometimes stick. Sometimes you think it's locked and it isn't, and your tripod starts to lean, which is a bit of a panic moment when you've got a camera on it. Also, the center column, which I don't use that often in fairness, but when I do decide to use it, um, when I try to unscrew this, this center section unscrews as well, this section here. And that drives me up the wall and it happens almost every time. So I was prepared to live with it because I shelled out 175 quid on it or something of that ilk. Um, and I didn't even buy the airhead that uh, three-legged thing do uh, because I was gonna use it with different ball heads. Um, for the most part, my geared head this is my little video tripod, a little ultra lightweight Benro thing. Um, I wouldn't put a stills camera on here, it's too wobbly. But this little aftermarket ball head that I've had for years and years and years, and this used to live on my KF, only weighs about 120 grams. Um, that, when I was hiking long distances, was what I would use on my Ray tripod. Anyway, Small Rig got in touch, and I was quite intrigued because. If I need any piece of, of kit that's well engineered, like precision engineered, rugged, good quality, and a really fair price, in other words, not that much more than the, the cheapest chips options on Amazon, I would go to Small Rig. So for example, right now, um, I've got a microphone and a studio light rigged up on Small Rig clamps with an extension arm for the microphone. 
Um, the camera that I'm talking to you on is my Sony RX100. When I used to use that out on location, I had a small rig cage for it so I could attach lights and microphones and stuff like that. So I was already a fan of the small rig brand. It had never let me down and I never felt I was paying through the nose for it. So they said, we've got this tripod, are you interested? And with all of that backstory, I'm getting to it. They sent me this. This is the small rig AP10 carbon fiber tripod. Now it's not branded as a travel tripod, but even including this really well engineered ball head, the whole thing only comes in at 1.2 kilos. So to me, it's, it's barely any heavier than my little lightweight video tripod. But as you're gonna see later in this video, it's extremely rigid uh, and can cope with some pretty intense conditions with zero camera shake. So tick that box. So as far as my pros and cons go, um, I do have one con, but actually it doesn't apply to me. The con that you might find is that the maximum height of this is only five foot four. Tell a lie, four foot four. Um, I was thinking about how tall I am there. Um, I'm not much taller than five foot four. Uh, so being a short ass, it doesn't have a center column and the maximum height fully extended is, uh, is four foot four. I knew I should have kept some notes and be referring to them. I was trying to do this so slickly and I'm making a complete holix of it. Sorry, small rig. Anyway, if you're any height that is a normal bloke height, this might be a little bit short for you. Now I tend to use when I'm on a tripod, the camera screen. So I'll just tilt it out and flip it and look down at it. So it makes no difference to me, but I didn't want a center column. And that was one of the things I checked when they emailed me and said, oh, well, and I said, yeah, but the next tripod I have won't have a center column because I'm far more likely to put this right down at ground level. Plus it saves a big chunk of weight. The legs only come in uh, four sections, but guess what, flip locks. That was a real downside. When I was replacing my old K and F tripod for the three-legged thing, I couldn't find one with flip locks um, that was gonna be the right sort of weight, size, price, and all that sort of thing. So these are a godsend. And I've, as I said, I've been using it for a couple of months and they're, they're, they're really efficient. They lock absolutely rigidly, really happy with that. And you can see, got a bit of sand on the feet here. I don't look after my stuff very well. Um, I got this on when I was out testing it yesterday, which I'm gonna show you shortly. The ball head, uh, I really love this. And actually, uh, I'll feel much more comfortable about using um, this little ball head instead of my geared head when I'm hiking and I've got longer walks to do and weight is more of a, more of a consideration because this really does follow the high quality small rig engineering. Um, the other thing is the lever that locks the ball head uh, has this kind of uh, wing nut affair on it, which makes it really easy to use when you've got uh, big heavy gloves on. That's already come in handy for me. It's also got a pan adjustment, so panos, no problem at all, but it's really lightweight. So despite being ruggedly and precision engineered, it doesn't weigh very much. So you don't have that trade-off where you want something that's high quality, but it's a big fat lump to lug up a hill. So pretty much the list of pros for me, it ticks all the boxes and I've been really pleased with it. I took it out for the first time when I was uh, out in the mountains uh, very early December. Uh, and here's uh, my thoughts at the time, my first time using it. Now for a long time, I've been looking for the perfect tripod. I mean, you know, we're photographers, we all do that. There's two things we're always after is the perfect tripod, the perfect camera bag. Well, I'm very happy with my camera bag and now I'm very happy with my tripod. The uh, 
the flip locks on the legs are absolutely brilliant. I really missed those when I switched over to what was my main tripod, which is now consigned to history. Um, I'm not a huge fan of ball heads. I've been using a geared head for some time. Uh, and to be fair, that's gonna go on here, except when I'm hiking in the hills, because this little ball head is a really good compromise. It weighs very little at all. But uh, when I've done some tests with it, the locking mechanism is so solid. It's that legendary small rig engineering quality. Um, the reason that I agreed to review this tripod. Um, and it really does an excellent job for such a tiny little lightweight ball head. Can't recommend it highly enough. You know, I'm looking forward to my summer camping trips where I just take this little tripod and this little ball head um, and not have the grief that I've had in the past lugging my other tripod up. Um, of course, I'm hand holding you today, so um, I'm only carrying the one but um, the build quality, the weight, the strength, the rigidity, all the things you want in a tripod and with flip locks on the legs, not those dreadful screw things. I'm really happy with it. Now, another use case for me is my weekend dog walks. If you follow my channel, you know that I always take a camera out with me on the dog walks. And I'd often considered lugging the tripod with me, but found that my Ray tripod was just too heavy and cumbersome. Um, my little Benro video tripod was just too wobbly. If I do a, a quarter of a second or half a second exposure in a howling gale, which is very often what I find the conditions to be, uh, it just wasn't cutting it. I was getting too much camera shake. So I've been carrying this with me uh, for the last few weeks. And I've got a couple of images that otherwise I'd have probably struggled with. Uh, and I've been quite happy with these images. So this little lightweight tripod, just routinely being strapped to the bottom of my bag when I'm out with a dog, has really made a difference. Now I really wanted to put it through its paces. So I went out yesterday in an absolutely howling gale down to the local coast because I thought it would give it a workout because it was sustained 40 knots, gusting 60 all afternoon. And I really struggled even to make a video, as you'll see. I've got absolutely no idea whether you can see me or hear me. I can't see a thing of screen. I've got so much spray on my face. It's an absolutely howling gale. Um, I've been using the tripod to shoot a bit of B-roll because that's about all I can do. I'm not going to attempt to talk you through any shots. And I'm going to use the tripod. If it works out, this is going to be such a good reference for it. This is going to test the tripod because I was using my uh, 8-25 wide angle lens. So no lightweight primes. This is a sort of chunky setup but I found this tripod handled it absolutely no problem. You can see from the rocks in these scenes that there's absolutely no shake at all. And this is with the legs at full extension. Now I was only there for half an hour or so just to really give it a workout, but even so, I was pretty happy with this image. And I've got a couple more that I'll put up at the end for you to have a look at. Now there's just one other test that I wanted to put this tripod through and that's to see how it copes with the full load. So I've got my 40 to 150, including my two times teleconverter. And normally on a tripod, I'd be using this bracket under here and it kind of balances the weight. So you don't have to worry too much. But one of the issues with uh, ball heads that I'm sure many of us have experienced is where you compose your image, you're out a, a long focal range. And if you've got it clamped under the camera body, you tighten up the ball head and as you let go of the camera, you get that dreaded droop and your, your image gets recomposed for you involuntarily. I've tested this on that little ball head and it's absolutely rock solid. I couldn't believe it. Now, maybe I got lucky, um, you know, you might have a dodgy ball head, but I have to say, I mean, I wouldn't use it like that. I would use it 
on the uh, on the bracket. But nevertheless, if you ever needed a test of a ball head, and some big heavy duty ball heads have that problem where it, they just won't clamp down tight enough. The engineering on this small rig tripod is excellent, and it's really good value for money. Um, I've only found it on their own website. They retail it at 139 uh, US, which I worked out is about 112 pounds. That includes the ball head, of course, so it's a pretty good deal, to be fair. But you're going to see an awful lot of this tripod uh, over the next however long it lasts, and hopefully a long, long time, uh, because it's now my main tripod. I've got faith in it. I've got some half decent images out of it already without trying. So uh, there we are. That's my recommendation. And uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, there won't be too many more gear reviews on this uh, channel in the near future, um, unless Olympus decide to get in touch and send me an OM5, which I would also have to be able to keep. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. Really hope you found that useful. And if you did, why not subscribe and join me next time? Cheers. <laughs>